Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. I've gotten many requests in the past for if I could make a little seahorse design for you guys, so I'm very happy to say that I've finally been able to do that, and I will be showing you how to make this lovely little wire-wrapped seahorse pendant in the video today. This is more of an intermediate level wire wrapping project, so if you're totally new to wire wrapping and haven't done it before, I would recommend you check out some of the other videos on my channel first. At a bare minimum, I'd say you want to be comfortable with making these sharp hairpin bends in wire, as well as with weaving in a simple figure eight pattern before you attempt this design. That being said, I will try and break this down for you and make it as easy as possible. Uh, towards that effort, I am also going to be making available for you on my Etsy shop this template, which I will be referencing as we go along. You don't have to have this to make the design, of course. You can just either get a free image online or sketch out your seahorse outline, but I have found that it's very helpful to have a little something to follow along with as you're shaping the wire, just to have a road map and make sure that everything is sitting where you want it to as you go. So again, I will leave a URL for where you can download this exact template of mine in the description section below. It should be right under the video if you're on a computer. If you're on a smartphone or tablet, you may need to click a little show more button or like a little arrow icon somewhere near the video to open that description section up. For wire, we will primarily be working with some 20 gauge round dead soft wire to do all the uh, seahorse framing and shaping. I will be using sterling silver, of course you can use any kind you like, as you can see in this piece here, I did use copper. And then for the little uh, weaving and connection bits, we're going to be using some 28 and 26 gauge round dead soft wires as well. For that weaving wire, I do like to use fine silver rather than sterling silver. That just makes it a little bit easier, but of course either will work just fine for you. And then the only other thing we're going to need is a two and a half to three millimeter metal bead, which we will be using to make the eye of our little critter here. If you have a jeweler's torch and know how to do it, you can also just simply ball up the end of the wire there. That will work just as well for you. So either a bead or a jeweler's torch for making the eye. As always, I will have in the description section below a list of the exact tools I'm using and where you can get them. Very simply, you'll need one to two pairs of chain nose or tweezer nose pliers, round nose pliers, and some flush cutters. All right, so let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is make this kind of general outline shape for our seahorse, and that will be using an 11 inch piece of our 20 gauge wire. I do recommend, of course, cutting a little more than you think you're going to need the first time you make this, just to be on the safe side. But for now, I will be taking an 11 inch piece, and we're going to start at the very top here by forming what will become our little um, ring on top to hang a bale from. So to do that, I'm going to go to the end of my 11 inch piece of 20 gauge wire. I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm gonna give myself about an inch or so of spare wire and just put our first little bend in there, just like that. And now this is the point at which we're going to start following along with our, our little uh, template here. So basically I'm just going to pick a side. I'm going to start working on the right hand side because that will more quickly get me to the tricky areas so I can demo those for you. And we're just going to kind of follow along making each bend as we come to it on our template here. So if you can see, I'm going to overlay this little spot here on top of our seahorse head. And I'm going to see that we need a little bend right there at that point. So I'm going to grip where it hits it on the template and just put in that little bend with my tweezer nose pliers. And each bend you make, if you want it to be a sharp bend, I'm going to go a little further than I need to and then straighten it back out. And that will help you achieve the sharpness that you want. All right, so as we see here now, we need to put another little bend in to make that spike on the top of his head. So again, following along where that was hitting on the template, I'm going to use my chain nose pliers to put a sharp little bend in there. And you can work this a little bit to make it as sharp as you want. As you can see, I'm, I'm not just bending at one time, I'm kind of gripping on each side repeatedly to sharpen that point up. And that will help you follow along and get the desired sharpness of these points as you're going. So I'm kind of just going to go along following the template as I go. Again, if you don't have the template, I recommend printing out 
something to follow along with, you know, a free seahorse image from online or something, so that you have a starting point. And here we want a little swooping bend in, heading to our next point, so I'm just forming that right on top of the template here, as you can see. And then we're going to put in another sharp little bend. So again, I marked on the template with my pliers to know where to shape that. And working back and forth to get that sharp little point. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do basically all the way around. I'm going to continue that process until I get down here to these spiky bits because we will be forming those a little bit differently. So I will come back with you when I get to that part. All right, so once you've formed your shape all the way down to that first little spine on his back fin kind of there, what we're gonna do now is start forming some very sharp little hairpin bends, which we're gonna make slightly differently. So what I'm going to do is hold this over top of my um, template once again here. I'm going to take my chain nose pliers, my tweezer nose pliers actually, and right where the tip of that spine is, I'm just going to grip with my chain nose pliers and then I'm going to bend this wire all the way over back on itself to do kind of like a U-shaped bend. And then I'm just going to pinch over right where that bend is and tighten it all the way down so that we have something like that now. Okay. And then what you can do is take your round nose pliers and we're just going to go between those two wires and open it back up ever so slightly. So that you have something like that. Now it's just a matter of putting in these little swoops between each spike. And you may find that easier to do with tweezer nose pliers versus round nose pliers. Just because the shapes we're working with are so tight you might have trouble getting in there and gripping it exactly where you need to. So what I'm actually doing is gripping over both sides of the spike there, if you can see like that, and then just using the tension by pushing this longer wire tail with my left hand to get that little curve in. All right, and then it's just a matter of repeating that same process, so laying over top of our template, marking with your pliers where the outer point of that little spine is going to extend and then putting in a very tight little hairpin bend that we can open back up a little bit with our round nose pliers. And once we finish up with those back spikes we're going to put in these long spiraling curves to form the seahorse's tail and this is best done without using tools if possible because I find it's easier with just your fingers to get those nice smooth bends in, which can be a little tricky. This is the reason we're working with soft wire instead of half hard wire. Um, even though we sacrifice a little bit of sturdiness in the piece, we can regain that by hammering it out. Whereas with half hard wire, this would be a lot harder to get this nice smooth curve in. So what I'm going to do is kind of hold things in place with my left hand. And I'm just going to start wrapping around using the wire's natural tension and inclination to start shaping that nice smooth curve in. And I'm going to keep spiraling it around here until we reach the point at the tip of our tail and then we will make another of those tight little hairpin bends to reverse direction and spiral back the other way. And if you need to refine this at the very end using your tools, you can just be careful not to grip too tightly and leave marks in there. All right, so once again, I'm going to make a mark right at the point, that little tip that we're trying to form there. I'm going to 
lay over top of the template, just grip on the wire at that point, and then we're going to do a little switchback kind of thing here, putting in another of those nice sharp hairpin bends. And then we're going to start spiraling our wire back the other way to do the belly side of our seahorse. And you may find it easy here this time to grip that tip we just made, the tip of the tail, with your chain nose pliers. And then I'm using my left hand to start tensioning that wire and pulling it back around to make our curve there like that. Once you've got that curve in place, you can transition over to making the belly curve. We're just going to be going the opposite direction now. And then where this wire comes up under his kind of chin and his neck area, we're going to do one final hairpin bend. This one I'm actually going to do front to back. So rather than bending this to the side, I'm going to do it towards us so that the wires lay on top of each other rather than side by side. So just like that. And then we'll continue on with shaping this guy's face and head. Again, just following along with our template. So we have now done our entire little outline shaping here. What we're going to do is just a simple wrapped loop where these two wires cross to create a holder for a bale down the road. So to do that, I'm going to make sure everything's lining up here how I want it to. Everything's sitting nicely and evenly on the template. And I'm going to see where these wires need to cross over for that to happen. Grip right where I want to start this wrap around the... Um, upper wire, and I'm just going to go around two or three times there, nice and tight, to create a little wrap loop. And then with our vertical wire, of course, we can do our little hanging loop. So pulling out my round nose pliers, I'm just going to wrap this around on itself. And using flush cutters, go ahead and trim off the excess. And then we can close that on up. And this is something that you can, if you do soldering, you can drop a little solder there just to secure that closed nicely. If not, just hammer it out to sturdy up the wires. But for now, we're going to move on to making our next portion, which is going to be this interior little shape that makes up the eye and kind of the center line of our seahorse's body. So go ahead and pull out your four and a half inch piece of 20 gauge wire and your two to three millimeter round metal bead. And like I said earlier, you can skip the bead if you have a jeweler's torch and just ball up like a two to three millimeter ball at the end of your wire. Just in case you don't have that though, I'm going to show you how to do this with the bead. So basically you want to get this right on the tippy end of this wire. Do a little swirl going around it, as you can see here, to make the eye of our seahorse. So best way to do that is to start a little bend about, I don't know, two or three millimeters in, and that is what our bead is going to sit on, but we're not going to stick the bead on just yet, because it'll fall right off, <laughs> so I'm going to continue swirling this wire around a little bit, 
just until we get to the point where we have enough room left to slide our bead on. And then I will stick it on that short little spit of wire that we have there. Just like that. And then we can continue wrapping this around to close that up on the bead to secure it in place. So that we have a little spiral just like that and closing the bead. All right, and then it's just a matter of, as before, following along with our template. So as you can see, we're going to continue spiraling this wire around, do some little pretty swoopy swoopies, which will go on the center line of our seahorse. And you don't have to get too crazy with shaping this exactly like the template, because we will be doing quite a bit of tweaking after we wind up hammering these guys. So don't worry too much about it all having to match up perfectly until after the hammering stage. Before we hammer, I am just going to trim off a little bit of this excess wire down here at the tail. I'm going to leave quite a bit more than I think I will need though because I just want to make sure that as things get stretched out and changed with the hammering, we don't wind up with too little wire to have this tip ending where we want. So I'm just going to trim off enough that it's easier to hammer and we don't have anything overlapping. And then we're also going to real quick just do these two little S-shaped swirls so that we can hammer everything out at the same time. So these are both made with one and a half inch long pieces of 20 gauge wire. So I have both of those made already. And we're just going to do two little S shapes. One of them has a slightly larger head than the other. Again, don't worry about getting those super exact just yet because we will be doing final alignment checking after hammering. So I'm just going to grip on the very tip of that with my round nose pliers, put in a nice little open spiral. And you can use your uh, tweezer or chain nose pliers to tighten that spiral up a little bit. So we'll do a small one, going to the other end of our wire, and spiraling the opposite direction to make an S shape. I'm going to put in a slightly larger open spiral on this one. Just wrapping this all the way around so that we get that nice little spirally S shape. And if you want to make sure you're on the right track, you can just lay this over top of our template. That looks about right. And then for the other one with our other piece of uh, one and a half inch long wire, we're going to do a slightly more symmetrical S shape. So again, going right on the end, twisting this around into an open spiral. I'm going to take this one a little further around. Again, flipping around to the other side, same thing, going on the end of it, wrapping this around into an open spiral, and then we'll just refine these down a little bit so it's more, uh, a little bit shorter rather than elongated, so that we have a shape like that then. Okay, so now let's go ahead and pull out our steel bench block and jeweler's hammer. Okay, so for hammering these guys out, a couple little tips to make sure where you don't want to hammer is uh, anywhere where we've got some overlapping wires. So right here up under his chin or neck area where we have those two wires top to bottom overlapping, you don't want to hammer that spot, avoid that. Of course you want to avoid our little wrap loop up the top here. And then obviously we want to not hammer our little bead, our little eye shape to flatten that out. But pretty much everything else is fair game. I'm gonna try and just evenly flatten it out. Um, I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the kind of large areas with no bends, like his belly, uh, the center spike, of course, we're gonna really focus on to make sure that is a lot sturdier and also it just looks nice to have it kind of flattened out and widened the wire a little bit. And we're also gonna do our two little swirl shapes as well.
Alright, once we've got our pieces hammered out as flat as you like them, which for me is about this kind of look is what we're going for, this is the point at which, because everything will have shifted with hammering, you want to go back and really make sure that everything is going to be lining up properly. So to do that, I'm going to do a combination of double checking against my template, so anywhere that it is differing from the template, I'm going to go back through, tweak it to be matching perfectly again. And then I will also be making sure that as I overlay the pieces with themselves, that everything is lining up. Again, how I mentioned before, those kind of uh, points where we want everything to connect are all sitting together. And you can see here where I have all the layers together. You can see what we're going for with how all the pieces should fit together. So let's go ahead and do all of that final tweaking. All right, now once you have all your pieces hammered out and reshaped according to your template and themselves, we can go ahead and start assembling everything together. So to do that, I'm going to take out my uh, 26 gauge round wire, and we're just going to start putting some little bindings in to connect all these pieces. Our first one we're going to do will be right above the eye, kind of on our seahorse's little forehead area. So go ahead and cut a short length of wire here. We don't need anything too long. One and a half to two inches should be just fine for you, so I'll just snip that off. And we will place our first little binding. Of course, as always, I like to start by bending our wire in half to kind of get that pre-shaped a little bit. And our first one's going to be a little tricky just because everything is still floating and disconnected. But just line up where you think the eye looks good on our seahorse's face, and then you want the side of that swirl to overlap with our outer frame and where that happens we will put our little binding wire to connect everything together right there and you do want your wire with the uh, with the eye to be sitting on top of the frame so we'll just drop that over there cross our tails over and start putting in a good number of wraps nice and tight and close next to each other Once you have a few good wraps securing that in place, we're going to snip off the excess ends, kind of on the back inside uh, part of our design, just so we can hide those wires nicely. Don't forget to smush them down with your chain nose or tweezer nose pliers to hide them and make sure there's no loose ends sticking out. And then you may need to reposition this slightly just to make sure it's running down that center line of your seahorse. And the centerpiece is still slightly floating, so let's go ahead and do a few more little attachment points. For our next one, we're going to take our upper swirl, the, the swirl that is more symmetrical and S-shaped, and we're going to overlay that so that the top part of the swirl touches the front and back of his neck. So you'll see we'll have a little connecting point there. And then the bottom part of our swirl is going to touch this little area on the frame right above his back fin, and then the center line right there will be another connecting point. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut a few more little binding pieces to start putting those wraps in. We'll go ahead and cut four more of these to accomplish that. These ones don't need to be very long at all, about an inch to an inch and a half should be just fine for you. So I'm going to cut four of these again with our 26 gauge wire. And if you wanted to use half round wire for these connecting pieces, that would be fine as well. You just want to go up a little bit in your um, diameter, maybe, uh, I don't know, 22 gauge half round would be about the same look, but lay a little flatter next to the wire for you. So I went ahead and bent those all into little U shapes as well. And we're just going to lay our piece again how we want it right there. So for my first wrap, I'm going to connect this back part of his neck to the swirl right there. So we'll do that one first. So dropping one of those little U-shaped connecting pieces over there. I'm just going to wrap the tails around, put in some tight little wraps here connecting this together. Once I have three or four wraps in there, I'm going to leave the ends as they are for now until I get everything fully secured. So for now I'm going to go ahead and start putting in my other little wraps to connect this piece. So for my next one, I'm going to connect 
right here, right above the fin with the edge of the squirrel. So dropping another piece over there, wrapping it around nice and tightly. And for these uh, connections, I am overlaying the flattened out swirl wire on top of the flattened out frame wire. I just think that looks a little nicer for the final piece than having them, say, side by side as we are wrapping. So as before, I'm going to put in about four nice tight wraps. Connecting that right there. And then we will connect the other side of our swirl with that center line wire. And then our final connecting point to finish this little swirling piece off is going to be right up here under his kind of chin and neck area. And we may only have room for two or three wraps right there, that's okay. Alright, once you've got all your connection points and are happy with how everything is sitting there, we can go ahead and tie off or uh, finish off all these little ends. Again, I'm going to flip to the back, find a nice little spot and kind of nest them on the uh, inner back of our design. And then I'll just go to town snipping all these little ends off to finish those down. And we've just got one more little swirl piece to put in place, so go ahead and pull that out. And this one, the way we're going to line it up is having the larger part of the swirl sitting on top. It's going to nestle up right into that space like that. And then down below, we want this little tiny swirl to nestle between that uh, midline wire and the back of his fin here. So I don't know if you can see, but I do need to do a few little tweaks, make that swirl a bit smaller to achieve that. And my midline wire has kind of shifted a little bit too, so I'm just going to readjust that ever so slightly to make a larger space back here. So I'm going to bring that out, change the curve of it a little bit to follow his belly a little bit better. Then I'm also going to trim off a little bit more from that inner little spiral, tighten that up a bit more to really make that fit in better with the space that we've got. Even with the template, every piece you make of this will turn out ever so slightly different. I need a few of these little customizations to make everything fit together perfectly, and that is okay. All right. So you can probably see where our new connection points are going to be for this swirl. We're going to have one right here on the center line, back here right above the fin. And then we will have two more here and here. Now that we've got all our little swirls attached, this is really starting to take shape. It's getting exciting. All we really have left to do, and this is unfortunately the most time-consuming part I always find, is to put all our little weaving bits in that will form the kind of belly of this critter. Um, so as you can see here, we're just going to go back and forth with our 28 gauge wire and this little crisscross design to finish off the belly of our seahorse. Okay, so go ahead and pull out your 28 gauge weaving wire. Um, I just store mine on a bobbin, but you don't have to have it on here. We're not actually going to be able to weave directly from the spool, unfortunately, because we're going to be feeding this through some different spaces, which is what makes this a little bit more of a time-consuming process. And since we're going to be feeding this through different spaces, I'm not going to work with one long piece of wire. I'm going to start with, uh, I don't know, maybe a 12 or 16 inch piece, whatever you are comfortable with um, having as length to feed through different spaces. That is what you can start with. And then we will just splice in extra lengths as we need. So just a short piece to start with. And you can use your template as a guide to see where to place our wires, but to start out we're just going to start by wrapping the tail of this right up here under his chin, just to kind of get this affixed. So I'm going to just start wrapping, tucking this wire end up through the space, and I'm going to put in a few nice wraps to attach our weaving wire to our outer frame wire here.
And then I'm going to continue wrapping down until I get to where we want to place our first um, cross wire where we will head across to that inner center line of the seahorse body. And again, you can use your template to see where that's going to fall. So that is about an eighth of an inch or so below where this little uh, spiral crosses over his body. And if you want, you can even lay it across, but you don't have to be super exact with this. You can totally eyeball it and, you know, increase or decrease the spaces if you like to achieve your desired look. So I'm going to do about like that. And then every time we cross over, we're going to kind of switch directions. So here my wire is coming from the underneath side of the design. So I'm going to bring it up top and then go around the top of my center line wire. So if you're familiar with a figure eight weave, that's basically what we're doing. We're just doing it very, very spaced out. So I'm going from the bottom, crossing over diagonally, and then going over the top. Okay, and as you can see, we are now hitting this little uh, top of our spiral there. So instead of continuing on downwards, because I don't actually have the space to do that, I'm going to take my tail and wrap this inner line wire all the way up to where it meets that spiral. Because if you can see here on our completed piece, what looks really good and what I like to do is to fill in both of these wires, both the outer belly wire and the inner line wire, uh, to fill them up with wraps all along. So that's what we're trying to achieve there. So again, working by tucking our end up through that space, I'm going to reverse directions and wrap back upwards to fill in that center line wire. And we will just continue doing that, placing each little wrap right next to the previous one until we run out of space and are all the way at the top. And then once you have run out of space and your weaving wire has reached that top point there, just go ahead and snip those ends off and we will finish that wire off on the back. So don't forget to use your chain nose or tweezer nose plier just to push that end down nice and tight to kind of hide it into that space. And do that with both of our ends from that little bit of weaving we did. And then it's kind of just rinse and repeat going all the way down, kind of working back and forth, filling in the spaces as needed. So I'm once again going to take my length of weaving wire and start wrapping it around directly below that little crossover wire. And as before, we will continue wrapping all the way all the way down until we get to our next crossover point that we want, which as before, you can either eyeball or go off of your little template. All right, and on this next little crossover wire piece, we're going to place right below the bottom of that swirl where it joins on. I think what we're going to need to do is place a few wraps going over the swirl and the center line wire just to make it look smoothless, uh, make it look seamless and smooth. So go ahead and once again, remembering that we're going to switch directions each time. So I'm coming over from the top of this wire, which means I'm gonna cross the space, go down to come up from the bottom on the other side. And then I'm going to tuck it up through that spiral right there and wrap a few times around both the spiral wire and our center wire, just until I reach the point where I can uh, easily transition over to be wrapping it around just the center wire. And do make sure that your little crossover piece is staying nice and straight there, not getting warped or bent in any way. If you need to tweak that with your chain nose pliers, you can do so. And then once I put a couple wraps in, I'm going to switch over to wrapping it around this space on our center wire. And I will continue that until our next crossover point, which is probably going to be right about before we reach that little um, next spiral. <clears throat> 
And as you go, do make sure that you are paying attention to the angle at which these crossovers happen. As you can see, we kind of want them radiating out to follow the curve as we go. So at a certain point, uh, the, the spacing and angle of them will change slightly. So just consult your template as you go to make sure you get the desired look at the end. But I am ready for another little crossover here. So I am coming from the top of this wire. So as I cross over, I'm gonna tuck down into this space so that I can then wrap around the bottom. And now we have this unwrapped portion to fill in. So what I'm going to do is switch directions, use the rest of this tail to wrap back up towards the seahorse's head. So you should be seeing the pattern now for how this goes. Basically we're just going to continue that, cutting and connecting more wire as we need to go all the way down around this guy's little curve to reach the tip of his tail and wind up with our wrapped look here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a bit more of that. All right, so after we've woven most of the way down, we are almost done. I just wanted to show you guys at this final little point here. You can see the wires are now getting really close together on the tip of our seahorse's tail, and it's going to be a little too hard. There's not quite enough space to continue with that figure eight weave going between the wires. So once you reach that point where it's just getting a little too tight for you to continue, we're just going to finish off by going around both of those center wires together a couple times. So I'm going to grab one final little length of our 28 gauge round dead soft wire. And we're just going to use that again going around both of those wires at once to finish off our tail and finish connecting finish connecting everything together there. Alright, so just feeding it up between that center wire and the outer frame wire. And we'll just put in as many wraps as there's room for. You don't have to go all the way to the tip of the tail if there's not quite space for you on your piece. I'm just going to finish off that end closest to the bit we've already woven by snipping it on the back. And if you don't like how close your wires are sitting next to each other here, you can kind of spread out the ones we've already woven to fill in that gap a little bit. Just like that. And then I might have room for one or two more passes here. There we go. And again, switching to the back, we're going to finish off that wire the exact same way, just kind of tucking it down into that little trough that we have there on the back. And if you are set up to do soldering, you can drop a little bit of solder here just to connect everything together at that point and really secure it. But if you don't, that's totally fine. I've made them without doing that and they hold up just fine with no issues as long as you make sure you shove that little wire tail into the back space nicely and double check with your fingers. There's nothing loose that'll catch on clothing. So now all we need to do is go ahead and add a bail on here and you are ready to hang this on a chain or cord. You can, of course, just use a large jump ring if you want something really simple and easy. You can also get some store-bought pre-made bales with an open ring that you can just slide on there. What I like to do is this little easy handmade bale, and I do have a separate tutorial on how to make this already on my channel, so I will leave a link for where you can view that if you want to try your hand at making your own bale. Of course, if you like, you can also finish this design off by antiquing or oxidizing it and then polishing it up. That's a really cool look with all the uh, all the dimension we have with the weaving and everything. That really makes it pop. If you're curious to learn how to do that and don't know already, I do have a tutorial on, I usually use liver of sulfur, I have a tutorial on how to antique wire with that. Again, I'll leave a link for that. You should see a little pop up in the upper right hand corner of your screen uh, where that video link will be. So thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful and easy to follow. Let me know in the comments section below if you make this and if you enjoy it, or if you have any questions along the way, I will try and uh, check those comments out and respond as well. But I hope everyone is doing well and having a good end of their summer here. I will catch you all in the next video. Happy crafting!